Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a pen from one of the companies I actually think is super underrated and that I really enjoy. That is Monteverde. Now Monteverde is a US company and when I say underrated, they're a well-known company and I have sung the praises of their ink line relentlessly. And their pens I really enjoy. I've got a number but they seem to get overlooked uh, in a lot of these sort of like entry level sort of uh, shootouts and things. So I actually think this is a brand worth looking at. And this particular pen I find very, very interesting. The pen we are looking at today is the Rishma. It's a relatively recent model uh, and has some lovely features. This is the box that comes in, which I actually really enjoy much more than a lot of the old Monteverde boxes. I think it's simple. It does what it needs to do. Simple logo. I would love more pen companies to look at more, uh, you know, sort of uh, biodegradable or, uh, you know, recyclable cases. But, you know, as far as plastic boxes go, I think this is um, okay. You open it up, there's, uh, you know, the Monteverde logo in the top there. And then we get the pen, a little card there about one of the pen's features, which is the magnetic clip. Um, as well as, you know, getting the pen, you also get a couple of cartridges and some information and stuff under the tray there. So this particular uh, pen is the black model. There are a range of different colours, blue, olive, purple, red, silver, turquoise, and of course this one, and they come with this like gunmetal uh, finish, and I think they're very sleek, uh, and it's kind of cool. So let's talk about the features of the pen, we'll then do a uh, you know, size comparison, writing sample, and all those kinds of things. So starting at the top of the pen, the little dimpled uh, end cap there, and then a clip which is um, really quite stiff, like maybe a little too stiff, um, and then it's got this sort of cut out down the middle of the clip, uh, reminiscent of a few other brands uh, done in their own way here. The cap is cylindrical, uh, and then there is no step down onto the barrel there, and at the barrel we get um, the uh, anodized aluminium, which runs along, uh, and then we get the end cap there again, which is the same gunmetal, and then a very, well, no, it's flat, sort of a end cap there. Now, we spoke about, about a magnetic clip, so you just pop it off there, and you hear that pop, and what that does is that uh, that pop is actually releasing a seal created to keep the nib wet, which is cool. Um, it's a straight section and a relatively small section. Uh, metal, fingerprints, perhaps, you know, a bit slick, things like that. You know, it's going to be one of those issues. Um, the nib is a number six nib, and the retailer I purchased this pen from had, had it listed as being um, the Yovo nibs because recently uh, uh, Monteverde, well, a, a range of brands covered by their distributor, moved to using uh, Yovo nibs, uh, which was a really great move because Yovo are consistent. So I'm going on face value and trusting the company that this is a Yovo made nib, um, but it is very definitely branded with the Monteverde uh, logos and the mountain range there, um, which is normal from a Monteverde uh, nib, uh, even the nibs of old. There's a tiny B engraved there on the side for broad, then we get a plastic feed. Now this pen is a standard international cartridge converter pen um, and at the moment I just have a Monteverde black uh, ink cartridge in there uh, which isn't sitting particularly straight but that's okay it's working and working very very well. Um, the It comes with a converter as well I should say that so always you know you, you've got all your options covered metal parts in the pen, so it cannot be eyedropped, unfortunately. Uh, and yeah, that is the pen. So a couple of features straight away is the fact that it is very cylindrical, it's quite minimalist. Uh, and I think that's the uh, the design aesthetic they were going for, following the, you know, the minimalist movement of the 60s, 1960s and 70s and that sort of thing. Um, as I said, this is a steel nib. This is the, as I said, it's apparently a Yovo nib, and uh, I know they did change to Yovo, so that's great. Uh, this is a broad. It comes, the Ritma comes uh, in everything from extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 
a 1.1 millimeter stub and the Omniflex nib, uh, which was, you know, sort of made in conjunction with things like Conklin and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a flex nib. This is just the standard nib. Monteverde uh, suggests this pen is a well-balanced heavyweight pen, and there is a bit of weight in there. Um, I said that magnetic cap to uncap there. Um, you have a very nicely balanced pen. The cap posts on the end, nice and securely with another magnetic closure. Um, and for me, that just puts the balance out ever so slightly. It's just a bit back heavy. And that's, you know, that's, that's not my thing, uh, but some people may not find that an issue. There's not no rough spot there between the cap and the uh, and the barrel. Should also say on the back of the cap there is where it is branded Monteverde Ridma. Um, there is a tiny little like ridge there uh, from the barrel to the section so that it lines up when it's capped. Um, that I do notice, and because it is a small section, I feel that under my fingers. It's not overly sharp, but I do feel it. Time for that stock standard size comparison. Here it is alongside Alami Safari. It's just a little bit shorter uh, in this format. It's not a small pen, but it is smaller than Alami Safari. Uncapped, it's a little closer. Uh, much smaller section, of course, and a larger nib. Um, the, I think the balance of the pen in terms of holding it and the distance from the page is good. Uh, and as I said, this is probably actually the way I would hold it when I am writing with the pen. Posted, it is a fairly good length. As I said, it posts securely with that magnetic closure, a little bit back heavy, uh, and a lot of the weight of the pen is actually in that cap, so which we'll come to in just a second. So what is the size, uh, the specs of the Montevideo Ritma? Well, it's 136 millimeters when it is capped, so good length. It's 129 when it is uncapped, and uh, good size in the hand, very comfortable, um, nice weight as well. And then it is 160 when it is posted. A uh, little bit of extra weight there in the back of the cap, um, but you know not overly long. Certainly a decent, good enough length to use posted. The section is 12 millimeters top to bottom, which gives it a very good width. It's a chunky little pen in the hand, and you feel that girth there. Um, but you, you know it's a shorter section, so as I said, you do feel the little step down there. The pen weighs 50 grams. Now, to put that into context, Alami Safari weighs about 18. So, roughly three Alami Safaris in terms of weight. Uh, 32 of that is in the body of the pen. So, unposted, you are feeling a decent sort of weight in your hand. The cap alone weighs 18 grams. So when you put that on the back, you are adding a substantial amount of weight there to the back of the pen. Writing sample time with my standard Clairefontaine 90 gram paper. That would just be the fact that the cap has been off for a while while I've been filming. Um, this is the Steel Broad nib and I think it's a good broad like I like that as a broad for me that is about where I would pitch a broad nib the ink is Monteverde black okay bad writing. Okay, it's very smooth. It's very smooth. Not buttery, buttery smooth, but very smooth. It's got a pretty generous sort of flow, which I enjoy. Um, yeah, so smooth, wet, uh, and reliable. Like, as I said, that isn't a good example of this pen. Um, it's a stiff nib. You are not opening up the tines for flex. Reverse writing. 
it's very scratchy. Um, you can get away with it for a word or two if you needed to, but it's not something I would do. Fast writing. There was only one very slight hesitation there. So it keeps up pretty well. Um, I would not be complaining about this pen. No one should be writing that fast. And as you saw for the, the majority of the writing sample, it keeps up nicely and there's no hard starts. So what are the pros and cons for the Ritma? Well, um, one thing that's gonna be a pain for a lot of people is the fact that it is a fingerprint magnet. You are gonna get fingerprints on this shiny gunmetal uh, material. Um, which is also the section. I don't mind about that. That shows the pen is used. That's what happens when you use the pen. But if that's an issue for you, just be aware. Uh, the other issue is that as a, as a straight metal section, it's going to be slick. If you sweat a lot when you use, if you have like sweaty hands or oily hands, this may not be the pen for you. Um, it's not going to be the section for everyone. It doesn't phase me. I enjoy it. I, I can write with this nib because I enjoy this pen, sorry, because I enjoy the nib so much. Um, and in a way, that little step down there does act as a bit of a grip because the section is so short. I think you'd be very surprised if anyone just had their fingers on that section. Um, the other thing I have kind of found a little bit is that sometimes when it is, because that magnetic cap is so secure, is that you can unscrew the barrel very easily um, and sometimes not even intentionally. Like never a lot, uh, but sometimes it's just sort of like, it's a little bit loose, like just from everyday use. Uh, so I don't know what can be done about that, an O-ring in the threading or something perhaps, but who knows. Now, if we're gonna talk about pros for this pen, we're gonna have to mention the price. Like this is a well-made pen. Machining is good. The quality of all the components is good. Comes with a converter, comes with cartridges, a good German-made nib, all of that. Like, the nib is great. Like, great. Uh, how much is this pen? Well, the MSRP from US online retailers is $45, US but the pen can often be bought from a lot of retailers for $36, US which puts it in a very competitive price point with a number uh, of pens, such as things like the Lamy Safari and the, you know, Twisby Eco. Maybe a touch more than those, but not a lot. Um, and for like a standard cartridge converter pen, uh, you know, with a, a set of a number six size nib and all that, it's kind of a pretty good deal. Good finishes, all those kinds of things. Um, I also really like um, the weight of this pen when I write with it unposted. I think it's very, very nice. Um, it's It feels good in my hand. It feels like I'm writing with something substantial. Then the other thing I really like about this pen is a simply aesthetic thing. I think the design is nice. I think it's cool. Like this sort of, uh, you know, straight barrel with the gunmetal ends and stuff. Like, sure, the clip, like, is reminiscent of a couple of others and a couple of that Monteverde have done themselves, let's be real. Um, but it is a nice, sleek pen, classy, simple design, uh, and I really enjoy that myself. So, this was the Monteverde Ritma uh, fountain pen. I uh, hope you found this video interesting and useful. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.